Welcome to Colonial Church. My name is Aaron Roberts, and for a time such as this, it is our sacred duty to keep socially distant from one another. And so our shared hope is, is that by maintaining that social distance over the next few weeks, we can slow this pandemic and allow our medical services to provide the level of care to ensure that the maximum number of lives are saved. The simple act of keeping socially distant from one another is a small sacrifice that each one of us can make in the name of love for our neighbor. The ministries of Colonial Church continue right now. This past week, we began Care Partners. And it's not just for people in our immediate church community. It's for anyone out there that you may know of who is feeling isolated or potentially alone. And the idea is simple. You sign up and you are paired with another person and you agree to, to check in on that person every 48 hours. It's a way for all of us to help someone get through. Now my usually Wednesday coffee with the pastor over at Einstein's won't be there this week, so please don't go there. Instead, I'm gonna be online. So put on a pot of coffee or tea and join me online and you'll see the information on our church's Facebook site. And we're just going to sit down. It's a time just to talk and connect about how we're all doing. It's always amazing to me the interesting conversations that come at Coffee with the Pastor. As we approach Easter, and yes, even if we can't come together on that Easter Sunday, like the disciples that were once huddled together, we will proclaim and experience the hope of resurrection. Each week, we are going to consider a spiritual practice that may help guide us and give us what we need to get through. Today we're going to be considering the powerful, ancient practice of meditation. It's a practice that has been with our faith tradition and Jesus, going back to the beginning of history. There's a reason for that. Today I hope you claim that practice for yourself and for this particular time that we're in together. In that hope, let's worship. As we come into this time of worship each week during this state of emergency, when we are apart from one another, I'd like us to begin by praying together through the words of the 46th Psalm. Will you pray with me? God is our refuge and strength. A help always near in times of trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea, when its waters roar and rage, when the mountains shake because of its surging waves. There is a river whose streams gladden God's city, the holiest dwelling of the Most High. God is in that place. It will never crumble. God will help it when the morning dawns. Nations roar. Kingdoms crumble. God utters God's voice. The earth melts. The Lord of heavenly forces is with us. The God of Jacob is our place of safety. Amen. After his baptism, the Spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness so that the devil might tempt him. After Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was starving. I've been socially distant now for seven days. Kids aren't headed back to school. I can't visit the people in this church community who are sick. And that's just killing me. So the story of Jesus being in the wilderness alone for 40 days and nights, it's kind of resonated with me. What did he do all that time? Isolation is stressful. Long before this pandemic, I, I plan to use these weeks leading up to Easter to consider the spiritual practices that have shaped the people of faith since the beginning of history. And now with everything that's going on, that seems even more appropriate, more fitting. 
Becomes, when it comes down to it, our practices, what we do, shape us every bit as much as our beliefs, what we think. In the next few weeks, I'm planning sermons based on the spiritual practices of meditation, fasting, and prayer. For whatever reason, many people don't attribute meditation to Christians. In fact, a letter to Timothy, an early Christian pastor, instructed him with these words. Meditate on these things and live by them so that your progress will be visible to all. Meditation has been a Christian practice from the beginning of Christianity and going back even before with our Jewish ancestors. In fact, it was sung in the very first psalm. The truly happy person doesn't follow wicked advice doesn't stand on the road of sinners, and doesn't sit with the disrespectful. Instead of doing those things, these persons love the Lord's instruction, and in God's instruction, meditate day and night. The practice of meditation, of centering yourself, has been with us since the very beginning. And this shouldn't be a surprise because as people all over the world have faced life stresses over the millennia, from things from famine to war and plagues, the practice of meditation allowed them to think more clearly, to rest and to sleep better, to recover from stress and trauma, and even to manage pain. The truth is, Meditation works, and it's ancient wisdom that we need right now. I've been thinking about how Jesus coped with stress. Now, particularly in Mark's version of Jesus' life, the scriptures say that he was getting impatient. And you know the story about Jesus walking on water? A lot of people know about that. It's in the sixth chapter of Mark. And right in the story, he needed some time to center himself because everyone wanted a piece of him. And when he doesn't get that time, doesn't have the time to meditate, Jesus gets a little cranky. Is anyone out there feeling a little stressed these days? When you're looking out at the days and the weeks ahead, it is not entirely clear how things are going to go, how things are going to shape up. And having practices to center yourself can make all the difference. These, right now, these are our wilderness days. No one knows how this is going to turn out. I met a woman last Friday, and she had just bought a business. She had thrown every thing that she had into purchasing this business. And she doesn't even know now if they're going to be able to launch. Susie Stroud in our church community, she died on Monday. She was a woman of profound faith and kindness. And I can't even give her the memorial service that she deserves. And that just hurts. Families, relationships are so stressed right now, and we're just at the beginning of this. I have spoken at length this with people who are extremely vulnerable to COVID-19, and for whom contracting it carries a high probability of death. Our hospital workers, nurses, and physicians, and everyone who works at a medical medical or care facility, all of them are on the front line at risk each day. And the stress of this moment is very, very real. And it could, it could fuel our fear and our anger easily, but only if we let it. We have spiritual practices which are proven to help allow us to think more clearly, 
to rest better, to get better sleep, and to recover from stress and trauma. Jesus taught that the peaceable kingdom of God is within you. Peace starts within and radiates out. The eye is the lamp of the body. Therefore, if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how terrible that darkness will be. So today we're going to take a few minutes to engage the spiritual practice of meditation. And then each day this week, I'm going to be posting a different guided meditation out on our Facebook page. There are different ways to meditate, and there isn't one that is really any better than any other. And so I'm going to lead you in the way that I personally practice. And it starts by sitting comfortably with your hands in your lap or on your legs. And try to sit up straight and have your eyes open to begin with. Be aware of your surroundings and have what I call soft eyes, meaning that you don't focus on any particular thing, just keeping a sense of awareness of what is around you. And now take a few deep cleansing breaths. In through your nose and then out through your mouth. I often think of this as a process to refresh my spirit as I force the stale air from my lungs and it's pushed out of my body and I am filled, I am inspired with fresh air. Now just allow your breathing to return to normal. And then if you feel comfortable doing so, just close your eyes. At this point in your meditation, there are different approaches. As we center ourselves around Jesus' teaching about our body being full of light, I invite you to imagine light. I picture it as liquid sunshine pouring into your body, down through the top of your head and going down to your toes. Filling you gradually. As that liquid sunshine fills your body, try to feel it filling and healing you. Now let your focus be on your breathing. Think about each breath. Observe how your body fills and empties with each breath. As thoughts and feelings come, and they, and they always will, acknowledge them. When you realize that you're thinking about something or feeling something, say to yourself, oh, that's a thought, or that's a feeling, and then just let it go, and return to the focus on your breath.
and let your focus go. And allow your mind to go wherever it wishes to. Try to sense the weight of your body as you're sitting. When you're ready, open your eyes. All of us are feeling stressed. All of us. No one knows what is happening, or has any, and any sense of control that we have has just been thrown out the window. The spiritual practice of meditation is powerful. It's ancient wisdom that we need. I know I need it right now. And each day this week, I'm going to be putting a guided meditation moment on our church's Facebook site for you. So use it in those moments when you're feeling stressed or anxious. Help God's spirit be present and healing to you. This is how we get through and maybe even grow from a time such as this. You pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Be with me in this uncertain moment. Help our barometer run toward faith instead of fear. And as we meet you in those moments of the spiritual practice of meditation, bless us always. Amen. Even in this time of social distancing, the ministries of Colonial Church continue. Car Wu was interviewed this last week. You may have seen it by the Shawnee Mission Post on how his work with artists helping the homeless is on behalf of some of the most vulnerable people in our city. And I want to thank the people in our church community who are putting me in touch with people that they know who are in trouble or in great need. This past week, I've been working to help connect people to mental health services, suicide uh, prevention, and resources that are so necessary right now. Through our church's website, you can give directly to, from your bank account or other electronic means, or you can always mail your offering directly to the church office. Our church's Board of Outreach Missions decided to lend our support this Lent to an initiative in partnership with the wider United Church of Christ. And it's an effort to help eliminate people's medical debt here in Kansas. Church communities all over the state are coming together and can make a huge difference. And we thought about doing this before the entire crisis that we're in now, and can you imagine how much more it's needed today? And so this morning, as we consider our offerings and what we have to get, give, Will you join me in a prayer thanking God's blessing on what we're doing? Many souls struggle to find hope with crushing medical debt and no hope for the income to pay it off. Lord, you are stirring the souls of those who can offer help. We believe that there is enough grace, enough mercy, Enough money, enough imagination, enough of everything that we need to make this right. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to carry each other's burdens, to bless our work together. Amen. I cannot overstate how difficult this week has been for so many. I have never encountered so much fear even after 9-11. And even though we're not in the same place right now, we can still be together in our prayers. People in our church community have prayers to be raised in this time of worship. And as I pray each one of these prayers, when I say, Lord, in your mercy, will you still respond, hear our prayer from wherever you are? As most of us practice social distancing, it's the healthcare workers. Anyone who works in a healthcare facility, a hospital, nursing facility, they are on the front line right now. 
And for love of neighbor, they are putting themselves in harm's way. So we raise them up in our prayers today. May God's Spirit give them strength and help. May God protect them as they practice the art of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Carla Matson asks for prayers for her friend Kay Weber and her husband Jerry, who had a terrible health issue come up as they were getting ready to return from Michigan from Alabama. And Carla and Jim are attempting to help them, and so we ask for God to be with them as they do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And on this day, we especially pray for all those who are vulnerable and frightened by this pandemic. You are not alone. Don't fear, because God is with you. God will strengthen you. God will surely help you as we set aside our fears and find peace inside. Let's take a moment now to pray silently together as Joseph gives us a moment of beauty and music. Let's pray together. in our community's continuing prayers. As the number of killed and wounded in our nation's increasing gun violence epidemic now exceeds the number killed in war around the world, we pray for God's Spirit to empower us, to change this broken world and end the needless deaths caused by this plague. We pray for caregivers and for those living with dementia. May they receive the respect and the love that they deserve. And we pray for God's guidance, for this nation's ideals of freedom and justice for all people in these turbulent times. We pray for anyone who is living in the shadow of depression and mental illness, and we ask for God's light of hope to shine. And for those immigrants and refugees who are far from the land they knew, we ask for safety and compassion to come from Christ Church. For those loved ones in our lives who are with cancer and other ongoing life-threatening conditions, we pray. For Barbara Darling, Sean Bolter, Ding Keeney, Karen Fogelsong, Kathy Hellwedge, Logan Lowry, Andrew Wood, Nathan Green, Clyde Griffiths, Cindy Russell, William Scar, and Jean Schmidt. May God's strength flow from our prayers to them. Grace and forgiveness are vital for us to come through this time with any sense of peace. Let's pray for that as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All of us are feeling stressed. No one knows how this is all going to turn out. And any sense of control that we thought we had is kind of thrown out the window right now. The spiritual practice of meditation is powerful. It's ancient wisdom that we need for right now. And 
I'll get it to you, those daily meditations in the days ahead. And this is how we get through, maybe even grow from, a time such as this. Help find that light of peace inside so that you may share that light wherever you are today. And as always, our church community comes together around its colonial church covenant. And if, even if you're not at a place today where you feel like you can make this covenant, please just hear these words as a blessing and a prayer that someday you will. Wherever you're at right now, will you say this with me? We covenant with the Lord and with one another and do bind ourselves in the presence of God to walk together in Christian love. We seek to worship God in spirit and in truth and to love our neighbors as ourselves. With God's help, we will honor Colonial Church in our conduct, support its program, and extend the influence of Christ throughout the world. This time of worship is ended. But our work to being a blessing continues now. So go in peace and live passionately and love faithfully and celebrate. Celebrate every moment of life that you have from now until our life's finale. Because our God of resurrecting grace goes with you and in you always. Amen. Thank you.